Welcome to the Simon Parks Connecting, Connecting Consciousness, Consciousness Show on Wolf Spirit Radio. Simon actively encourages you to post your questions live to him in the chat room at wolfspiritradio.com forward slash listen or call in on 0141 356 4141. Call in on 0141 356 4141. The next two hours will be full of debate, interview guests, and up to date news. Please join Simon in playing an active role. Connecting Consciousness Show. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Ah, just on cue, there's the famous clock. Bingity bongity. Hello. Hello, JP. Hello, Hi, everybody. How are you, JP? Are you well? Uh, I'm very well. We're, uh, it's, uh, it's the Scottish winter, uh, it's the Scottish summer, same thing. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're, uh, it's, it's nice and grey outside, but, uh, it's alright. So I, I'm here with, uh, Pip the Husky Dog, uh, if anybody hears this weird sort of strange language of dogness. <laughs> Anubian, he speaks Anubian. Yeah, uh, you were saying that you've, uh, you've got this new dog. Uh, well, he's, he's not my new dog. He's my girlfriend's dog, um, who's gone away for a week. She's left. She's dumped him on me. Um, she's uh, left me to babysit. So, <laughs> so, uh, it happens once every year, so uh, I have okay. to keep looking. He's, he's all right, though. He's, he's he's okay once he's settled in, but he's just arrived, so he's a bit bit. Okay. Anyway, um, we have so many questions just pouring in. Um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Pop Alexander, Marjorie over there in uh, uh, Tucson. In Arizona, uh, she's gathering the collect, uh, collecting all the questions for me and posting them into this chat room. I've got a whole, whole other bunch that I got from uh, emails that people sent to me, and you've no idea how many emails, di- different vectors. You know, I got about five emails, and I get questions on all of them, plus uh, chat room uh, questions and all this stuff. So we got plenty to talk about. Uh, I'd like to also ask if people. Um, uh, try and be mindful that uh, we are in a, a chat room situation. There's there's a lot of people who are tuning in. Um, we want to give everybody a turn. So if you have questions, try not to ask questions that have been asked before. Um, you know, do a, do a bit of your research because these these are very precious times. And thus, being precious, uh, let's let's get on with it. Uh, Simon, first of all, do you have any um, any uh, like maintenance announcements that you'd like to make? Like uh, maintenance, you mean like uh, repairing the electricity? <laughs> that would be a good one. Maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, just just a few little updates. Well, first of all, um, I was very very pleased. <clears throat> Yesterday, Saturday, we had our first connecting consciousness get together, um, and that was held at uh, someone's house. Oh, my very able <clears throat> web manager. We had thirty five people, and uh, I think the furthest traveller came from Spain. So they they flew over. And these were all people who I have spoken to, uh, people who have connected with me for assistance and help and uh, obviously got to know them personally. So what was so wonderful about this was that um, it didn't rain until the very end. So we were able to be out in, in the fabulous garden and everybody, not so much knew everyone, but everybody realized that there was no judgment. Everyone had their own story everyone had their own vision but their overall vision was shared so it made no matter whether they their soul in their body was perhaps of a reptilian nature or whether it was of a palladian nature they all wanted the same thing which is ultimately freedom for the human race um and just to actually get back on the track that we should be. So it was lovely for the four hours or so that we were together where people could talk without anybody making a judgment on them. So we're going to be doing more of these and we're going to try and you know, at some point move them around the country a bit so that it's it's easier for people who are travelling a distance. Um, so that was the very first That's one, lovely. our very first c- connecting consciousness get together. On, on a world scale, um, the... Uh, Fed has decided not to raise interest rates, uh, regardless of whatever you may be reading in the Wall Street 
Echo, or whatever it's called. <laughs> um, what they've done is they've been able to identify a number of people who hold what I would call real money. And that means money that's backed by something tangible. Uh, I'll give an example. Somebody who owns a diamond mine, uh, the value of that diamond mine might be a um, billion dollars. But if you project it over 20 years, then it's $20 billion. So what the uh, controlling element have been able to do is get these people to uh, deposit some of this very real worth material for three months in a bank. I won't name the bank. I actually know what it is, but I'm sure there'll be trouble if I name it, uh, which is actually in America, but it's not an American bank, but it is based in America and is holding it for three months so that the bank balance looks very good. Now, that means that I do not predict a crash in the United States this year. Um, when I look back on my predictions, um, uh, I don't take any pride in the fact that I was right. We nearly saw the collapse of the Chinese government. Anyone who's done any research knows that uh, an attack by the cabal, the same group that is the cabal in America, attacked the Chinese government by uh, hitting them where it hurts, which is the minerals, metals market. China is, is developing at an incredible rate and has uh, an unrestricted growth rate of about 10%. And that's wow. dependent. That's dependent. It, it is huge. That's dependent on obviously everything from concrete to metal to what have you. So the attack on the the, the metals uh, stock market nearly brought them down. Now I've been actually chatting to a couple of people on this subject generally, and there's a bit of confusion. It isn't the amount of debt that's the problem. You think about Greece. And all the, the newspapers and the television just focuses on the debt. It's not actually the debt that matters. And because the debt isn't real anyway, it's just a false thing. What matters is the ability of the country to create wealth. Now, in China's case, it is growing at the rate of 10%, but the debt is growing at the rate of 20%. So every year, the uh, growth of the, the gross national product of the country has been exceeded by 10%. So most of the Western countries are into the 100% plus debt. In other words, they are exceeding their ability of their country to produce wealth maybe by, by two, three, four times. This is the issue. This is what um, will finally bring down Western economies, not the debt, but the fact that it is incapable of paying it. And just finally, with this terrible situation in Greece, what people are not being told is that the Greeks have been um, threatened that if they don't uh, maintain their payments now, then their country will be seized. And what I mean by that is anyone who has a mortgage or has uh, backed their loan against something else, and if you default on the loan, then they come and take goods to the value of and what Greece has been told is that if it defaults on its payments then basically they will strip the country which means everything from a tractor to, to a factory to what have you so this is how countries are owned by I suppose ultimately the Rothschild really uh, they will say that as long as you make your payments you're fine if you don't make the payments we won't come and take money off you because that's valueless we'll come and because we know it's valueless because we print it but we'll come and take stuff that really is worth it. So uh, a big piece of industrial machinery or something to do with a farm. Uh, and that's, that's how the, they're dealing with it because everyone in, in, the, in the know is now aware that paper money is totally valueless and they're trying to mad scramble to back it up with something that is tangible, whether that's diamonds, gold, real estate it doesn't matter that's what they want and the chinese have been at it for years and anybody in america knows that probably they can't be too far away from something the chinese have bought so anyway jp it's just really to say to people that um we're not looking at a financial collapse in the states this year uh, september we are looking at some form of um insurrection of some sort some form of uh, small scale activity in the states and we're also looking at a, an energy wave which is part and parcel of what we've already had but is designed to break the status quo we've had a blanket of reptilian energy over the earth now for nearly two years which has brought a stagnation and 
uh, psychic people know that we're not moving forward as we should be. So there's a, a large blast of uh, very positive energy due around the September time, which should get the ball rolling again. So that's that's my maintenance with my maintenance hat okay. on. That, so uh, just to, just to pick up on that, this is what we've called Wave X. Is that right? Or is well, that just something? Is that just a buzz term, a meme that is like, oh, well, I'm I'm owning this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm quite happy for it to be called Wave X. Um, it, it, it's it's a form of consciousness that is going to be projected over the planet, um, and as long as people don't expect to feel vibrations in their feet, as long as they don't expect a fire, I do not want a, re- a replay of the 2012 situation where people were absolutely disheartened because the ground didn't open up and a volcano erupt. You know, people have got to understand this isn't about a physical change. This is about an energy change occurring to their bodies. Um, The psychic ones uh, will actually feel a change. And I'm hopeful that people who are not psychic will will feel something. But please don't be looking for a, a light show or a firework display. It doesn't work like that. Right. Okay. So, um, yes, let's uh, let's not expect big things. Now, actually, there's somebody calling in. Uh, should we take this caller? Yeah. Why not? Let's uh, let's. Uh, so, area code five o three. You're directly on the air with Simon Parks. Who's speaking? Hello. 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 Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. I'm. I'm. I have some fervent questions I've been wanting to ask, and I'm wondering how to get them to you. Uh, right. Well, uh, there's loads and loads of people who are asking for questions uh, or are asking questions, putting them in the chat room at Wolf Spirit Radio. Um, yes, I'm on Wolf Spirit Radio, and I don't know how to get to the chat room. Uh, go to listen and chat on the top of the page on the menu. I, okay, I'm listening. Okay, but where's the chat? It should... Welcome to Wolf Chat. Yeah, that's it. Okay, is there any possibility that I might be able to email you my questions uh, and that? Um, look, look. The next I'm sorry. Uh, what's your name? What's your name, dear? This is a very uh, like we're we're on the air, and uh, it would be easier if you just ask one question, one question only, please. Of the most important question, because we got so many questions, you can only take one one question from each person. Yeah, so I, I if you could ask your that. question okay. now, what's your name as well? Okay. Just, okay. I'll go. To, should I just put it into the chat? No, no. Speak it out now, and we'll answer it. Okay. Do, it you come no, straight in, please. All right. Um, Oh. J- JP, can I just can I yes, just, please? Oh, uh, maybe we should move on. Yeah, no, that's okay. Can I, I just have a quick word with I, her? Sorry. H- hello. What What's your name? What? She's gone. <laughs> she, she, she had about four players playing. I could hear this echo going yeah. on. on. <laughs> the, the thing is, you see, it may be that it was of a very personal nature. Yes. It may be that. So I, I can understand if she didn't want to do it. Um, the best thing is at the moment we're trying to get the website up and running. Uh, you know we we had to reduce it because we had so many attacks um, if someone does have something of a personal nature and they they can't you know ask it over the air uh, if they can sort of email um, and then I, I'll take it from there so if people just do that that's probably the best bet that's it that's a good thing and and uh, you can get any there's a contact form on simonparks.org yeah, there should be. We should be getting it back up and running now so yeah. people can get, get back. So, yes, I appreciate there must be some very personal stuff. I know mm. there is. I deal with it. So, yeah, uh, to save the save hassle, if people just email, that would be better. Yeah, much better. But, so um, please don't call in, although we do have call-in numbers, uh, it, and, unless you've got a really, if you can really sort of laser point this. Let's get go. Let's get going. We're, we're quarter past. Um, so let's say, uh, my first question here is from Kitty Kubiak, which is a lovely sound. It must be uh, Kennedy. Is the high energy of the galaxy we are entering the photon belt? Is it the same as wave X? Or is it some kind of energetic wave that is moving through the entire universe? Now, you, you outlined a little bit about that a minute ago, but do you want to just fill everybody in on, on the, the sort of complete, the completeness of this? Yes. Um, it's not to do with any sort of belts. Um, it is to do with... We talk about energy. It's actually more to do with consciousness. It's actually a, I'm happy to use the word, a divine consciousness, actually. It's a divine consciousness that will 
uh, strike the planet over a period of hours which means as the planet rotates so that all of the planet will be bathed in it it's not, not just the people that will be uh, subject to this it will actually be penetrate the earth and will connect with the earth and will alter and change some of the procedures in the earth at the moment um, so this is a uh, a long planned element that's to happen um, I'm watching it very carefully because on the 15th of August this year um, there's a very important planetary alignment and CERN, the Hadron Collider is due to ramp up to its maximum output on the 15th and there's no coincidence and this should be seen in uh, relation to us entering this uh, energy or consciousness um, stream so Hadron Collider is going to be activated to attempt to interfere as it did in 2012 um, so I'm watching that one very carefully so this is a separate from any, any belts or, or anything that's physical this is something that was always meant to happen both to the people on the planet and the planet itself it's positive okay. excellent Thank you, because um, well, uh, my personal thought about this wave is if the galaxy is a conscious being and its greater aware points of awareness exist in the center, then somehow there has to be a mechanism to transmit those points of awareness out like thoughts from the center all the way to the end. And, uh, and the, the thought the thought process of the galaxy must be just completely god mind sending out god mind all the time yeah so the the wave is like a pulse that's a, that's has been sent out from the center of the galaxy and it's taken a long time to get here um have 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 anybody that you know or any of your um, off-planet groups um human or otherwise can they see this thing coming are they watching it as uh, i'm presumably people are tracking it beings are tracking it Yes, it's, it's projected, <clears throat> the, the, um, not in the same way as we would understand people sitting over a radar scope tracking something and the machine goes bleep, bleep, bleep as it counts down. Um, it's more to do with um, history in the same way as the Mayan, the Mayan calendar tracks. So, for instance, it was always predicted and expected. Uh, certain beings are not able to detect it because they have fallen from grace themselves. Um, but those creatures that are still connected to uh, source will, at a higher level, will actually be able to feel it as it approaches. It's almost like a pressure wave building up before it. Um, so it's something that can't be stopped or interfered with because it is the will of the creator. It is the will of the, 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 the universe, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so what beings on both sides of the fence are doing is either to try to reduce its effect or increase its effect so they can't stop it but they're trying to play around the the periphery the edges of it so this really is crunch time um i mean this is this is what we've been waiting for all of these years the whole well, well thing. Uh, what we were waiting for was 2012 uh, that was the crunch time the 21st of December 2012 that was the crunch time that was the moment that the door was kicked open never to be shut again but we you're right we've been waiting for this because without this uh, addition humanity would just get stuck in the mud and not go further so we've been waiting for this to to give us a final kickstart a final push um, what you will notice is that more and more people will become discerning people will uh, become even more suspect of information that is fed to them by official lines. People will become more spiritual, more, uh, there'll be more cases of children um, being telepathic or being able to levitate things. It, it, there should be a, a wide increase. And the question is, of course, whether the established media um, will be able to hold it back or whether even some of the journalists or TV guys um, are, are also connected to this, and so they try to get the truth out. So it, it's going to be fascinating to watch. Yes, it's long been predicted. Yes, it's, uh, it's a very important element, but it is part of a sequence of interactions from a very high source 
to to see that the the humans get every chance so it's 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 not the last one but it's nearly the last one right okay um so th this is uh and this is again something i've been i've been tracking personally you know like the, these feelings of uh you know i was talking earlier on uh, before the show uh, there's a lot of feelings of um, what we call uh, stuff coming up, um, i.e. Uh, old pain and trauma and uh, weird jealousies and hatreds and, you know, these weird emotions that, that everybody thought that they would, you know, completely cured from or just never, hap never, never come up before. But they're coming up to clear um, uh, patterns that are, you know, that, that, that will stop you from being the 100 percent human being that that we that this wave is going to encourage us more to do isn't it yeah i think i think people uh, are sometimes too hard on themselves um they may be <clears throat> do it on a two or three or four or five year period of uh, enlightenment and they think they've gone beyond a certain point suddenly something happens which seems to be very negative and drag them back and they begin to question themselves as to you know how could i be so stupid or how could such a dense heavy energy affect me the reality is that we're still in a largely third dimensional realm and you know whether we like it or not <clears throat> we have mammalian bodies <clears throat> excuse me and we have brains that we could describe loosely as monkey brains um, we are going to be no matter how uh, spiritual we think we are we are going to from time to time <clears throat> have issues that uh, are in our face and that's deliberate and we have to deal with them so the the problem isn't that we suddenly have these issues that we thought we got rid of the main issue is how do we deal with them um, do we move on from it or do they drag us back so all i'd say to people is it's perfectly normal um, just deal with it and get on with it yeah and there, there's many ways nowadays of dealing with these emotions uh, and um, you know counseling emotional freedom technique there's some very good ones so Let's do, let's now. Okay, so the question and uh, uh, segues nicely when we were talking about discernment. You know what's coming? <laughs> husky dog. Not the husky dog. No. Um, the um, the big question. The big question that's going around doing the rounds uh, this last month is dan, dan, da, blue avians. Corey Good, David Wilcock, um, Michael Seller. Are they being taken for a ride? Um, uh, Cory Goods, uh, and then there's this, uh, the Ruiner, who's, you know, an opposite Illuminati saying, blah, blah, blah. and then there's this other bright guy, Bradley Loves, and Alfred Weber, who are sort of looking on and saying, hmm, there's a bit of strange stuff. So, Simon Parks, what's your angle on this whole controversy that's going on? Hmm. Thank you. Um, I think. It would be very useful to uh, contact Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas, in my book, actually genuinely reads the Akashic Records. The problem is, you see, that some beings are capable of removing their signature from the Akashic Records. Um, they can actually just blank it. I don't just mean uh, didacted by sort of the traditional black line through it, but the pages relating to them can actually be removed. Um, whenever we talk... <coughs> about people who have had consistent work with uh, CIA, NSA, uh, or the uh, Space Command, we should always be worried about mind control and false memories that are planted. Now, uh, <clears throat> a guy I've got a lot of time for is a guy called Randy Kramer. Randy Kramer uh, and I did a joint radio show with Alfred Weber. And um, we talked a lot about Mars. And, um, you know, it, it was very interesting that a lot of the stuff that Andy was coming out with, I could back up and vice versa. Although he was a very decent Randy because he actually said, look, I know some of the memories in my head are not real. Some of the memories in my head are being, um, you know, implanted. So it was very interesting when people like Corey Good actually start verifying um, things that, that Randy Kramer has said because it could be argued that if one person has mind control 
uh, a Tuesday at three o'clock in the afternoon and two hours later another person comes in for the same memory implant well yes they would both support each other and agree because they are accessing the same memories um, and what I would say from all the deprogramming work that I've done with people is that these people would pass a lie detector test because to them they are real and genuine memories and you know the, you can't say to somebody oh you're making it up or you're lying because you know they, they, they go into a terrible state because they're not making it up in the sense that they believe it to be true. So let's talk about the, these, these so-called blue avians. A number of people who I deeply respect have no knowledge of blue avians. But nevertheless, <clears throat> there was uh, an object tracked by the Lucifer telescope run by the Vatican uh, back end of last year, early this year, uh, that appeared to have some entities on board which weren't uh, reptilian in nature, but were of a different sort of group who were far, far more supportive of the planet. <clears throat> and these groups actually made a connection with Putin, Russia, and also tentatively with China, which was quite an interesting turn up. But as to blue avians, <clears throat> um, I honestly would say that the, the jury's out at the moment. So it's really interesting because, uh, like, you know, the avian theme has come up. You know, I'm looking at my chickens and I'm thinking, God, oh, I wonder what it would be like to live in a chicken world. <laughs> do they have Kentucky oh. Fried Human? You know, like, <laughs> do, 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 uh, you know, like, I've, I've had some, you know, like, uh, like, imagine being Jewish, right? And, you know, you brought well, up... I am, hot... I, am, I am Jewish. Yeah, I know, I know, me too. But uh, imagine being brought up Jewish and then, then you land on the planet of chickens. What do you say? <laughs> say oi, oi vey. Oi vey. <laughs> um, I, think, I think the important thing is that when... Uh, and I've said it before on, your, on the show that when an alien looks more bug-eyed, people accept it. But of course, when it looks like something we recognise, it becomes um, more of a concern. Uh, and we know, don't we, that, that, that chickens and birds evolved from dinosaurs. So that's quite interesting. Um, but the only thing I'm saying is that uh, don't seem to have any... Uh, evidence of blue avians being a real race rather than false images planted in somebody's mind um so we we'll yeah. wait to see how it develops and there's a whole blue thing going on as well you know there's blue beam blue ray uh blue avians well and blue is part of the mind control situation Absolutely. isn't it it's it's see, like polarization see, JP, yeah. this is why this is why I'm on your show because <laughs> of all the people I met, you were the one guy. This isn't to to say there are others aren't, but it's, you're the one guy I met who was with it. Yes, I mean anyone who's listened to some of my radio or or, or presentations knows that I talk as much as I can about the blue light because it's a part of the control system. And when I was first told about the blue avians, what I said was, yes, I've heard of them which is, yes, I have heard of them. But the colour blue is, is a control colour. You know, it is, it is the colour of the elite. It is the colour of the people. They don't like the colour. They use the colour. It's part of their control mechanism. And so as soon as I heard the colour was being associated with them, I immediately thought of programming. Because when you associate a colour or a number with something, that is how people are activated who have had mind control whether it's a, a certain colored handbag on a hollywood um uh, actress's um sofa or chair or whether it's a type of uh, wallpaper or you know that's how subtle it is and, and and the audience will know because the audience are very switched on so because the color was associated with these creatures and they didn't have to be cooler i, I was immediately um worried that this was a name created by somebody in a complex or a, a facility and part of the program and if we're now seeing on the internet a great huge explosion of de debate about these creatures again that is deliberate that is deliberate it's part of the um, mass swamping of intellect uh, by certain forces so all i'm saying is jury's out and um, I'll just see how things develop. So, all right, I just, I just got a couple more little nuggets here. 
there is a specific color of blue that has been patented by hang on a second have I got the right thing Barclays Bank <coughs> there you go and when um, the guy whose father got um, no the guy whose uh, whose son was involved in the false flag in America um, he was the guy who was analyzing the whole corporate structure of the planet and finding out that Barclays Bank runs everything. It's connected right in the middle of the web of highly tangled complex corporations and, and things like that. So uh, is there a link there, Simon? He's when, all right, let's, let's look at it this way. 1933 when Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany and took control of uh, the country, basically, uh, he had a propaganda minister called Dr. Joseph Goebbels. Uh, and Dr. Joseph Goebbels um, was a very, very astute uh, manipulator. Uh, and it's true to say that certain political parties in the 1980s and 90s actually looked back at the uh, the way that Hitler was sold um, and presented to learn how they could actually learn tricks from it. In 1933, Dr. Joseph Goebbels changed, now I believe it was the letter A in music, the letter A, but also the letter C has been changed. Yeah, the note of A. Well, actually, yes. it's um, when, when you tune an instrument, uh, as an orchestra, you always tune... Somebody plays an A, and it's usually um, a reed instrument, like a... a, a well, literally, the accordion is, is the instrument that accords everybody, everybody tunes to. Yes. So when you... Um, the note of A was a certain number of cycles uh, that is depending on the Par Pythagoras. And uh, the uh, and Goebbels took that and made it... It just, he tweaked it by eight cycles a second, but it was that's enough to uh, have a psychological effect of, of more anxiety. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, as a, as a musician, I, I've, I've researched well, a lot of this. Yeah, and he used it to run a lot around his newsreels. So when he was showing anti-Semitic videos, and they, they, they funded a lot of anti-Jewish films, uh, he ensured that he used that. And when he was talking about his political opponents or Hitler's political opponents or the, the, the threat from this country or that country, then that would be the music background. So the reason I'm talking about that is it shows right back in 1933 that the elite were aware that the imagery or the sound or the colour they were using had an effect. And what I think is perhaps much more uh, concerning than any of that is that before the Second World War, the Americans, the American government, also altered the letter A. So if you want evidence of a one-world government, there you go. Before the Second World War, both uh, Germany and America actually uh, alter the frequency of the letter A. But back to Barclays Bank. Um, if blue is a controlling colour, then it is the colour of authority. So police, ambulance, fire brigade, etc., 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 are authority. So the blue light is the symbol of authority. That is why in Great Britain, the Conservative Party, the current government at the moment, has the colour blue, because it is the number one um, governing governing group. It is the elite. So if a bank patents or protects a particular frequency of blue then it must be the closest to the blue that affects the human mind through the optic nerve and the eye and therefore they don't want anyone else to have that so that anybody who looks at that color is more drawn in and believes more and has more respect and oh my bank is very strong it's not going to go under because it's got this lovely blue business card i was given uh, so yes absolutely uh, these are tricks that have been used for hundreds of years.
Thank you very much. A very, very important subject there, Simon. So, <laughs> let's. I, and I have. I, we're we're on uh, question number two just now, and like there's twenty four. So <laughs> maybe we should, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, look through them and and, um, and, and now um, someone's calling, but for some reason I can't bring them in. So uh, Lizzie Ben Zikri, please uh, stop calling. Please put your question into the chat room thing. Thank you, my dear. Okay, uh, now here's another another very salient point, uh, a salient uh, meme here. Um, I'm curious what Simon Parks thinks about the alien black goo and earth-based gla- black goo that Harold Kautz Vela talked about in June at the length in the Bases conference that was recently posted on YouTube. Clearly what Harold is doing is very advanced disclosure, which I hope will help unity consciousness as isn't for a duality agenda. So, two questions, really. Black goo... Unity, duality, or is it Borg? <laughs> right, the, the Falklands War that Great Britain fought against Argentina was fought over black goo. Really? Yeah, nothing, nothing else, just the black goo. And in fact, a, a commando team, while well, it was SA, um, SS, the SAS, uh, and a group of commandos went and blew up one of the facilities or uh, entrance points to an underground facility where this black goo was being uh, worked on. So the whole of the Falklands War was literally about the control of this resource. There are two sorts of black goo, to, black goo, to my knowledge. One is a natural element of the earth, which is uh, sentient, um, and from it you can actually uh, synthesize life. And there's another form which was seeded from off-world or off-planet. I don't know whether it was seeded literally um, by chance or, or deliberately, but that's rather negative and um, has the ability to take a shape or form. Uh, I don't mean a shape or form like change into a dog or, or a cat or a husky dog, but change into a form um, that would change its crystalline structure and therefore it could become... Um, um, poisonous or negative so there is a natural native material and there's also something that is uh, brought in from elsewhere and it is bo- well, both are sentient I didn't see uh, the, the basis conference, in fact I, w- I was invited by Miles to, to speak at the basis conference but unfortunately I had a prior engagement so I wasn't able to to attend and, and to be a guest speaker uh, and because I had this prior engagement I wasn't able to to catch up or go go to see it but i am aware of the black goo and i am aware that there's a, a history and some british uh, defense contracting companies um have actually some samples of this and are experimenting with them or at least they have experimented with them i think they've just put them in a, a concrete bunker at the moment so yes um I, without having heard what this guy is talking about from the little you've told me then yes it sounds genuine to me so the black goo is um so there's is there a, now this is what the um, was in the x files well you 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 about all people know that if we see it on television um as as a quote science fiction or science fantasy story it's a you know, documentary <laughs> yeah exactly someone is leaking it deliberately um either because it's a fantastic story and it's based on the truth and and we'll can go with it or how do we try and get this information out to the public in such a way as i can't be done for treason uh it's like some it's like charles hall uh bless him who 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 was the weatherman in area 51 and had some very interesting connections with uh, off-world entities and in the front of his book he had to say uh, this isn't real um this is just a story uh because he had to protect himself you know, and that's the world we live in, that we, we seem seem to have to pretend that what we're saying is made up just so we can get it published. And that's not a free world, is it? So, yes, the, the black goo in the X-Files is there for a reason. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so maybe we'll discuss this to, to a greater depth in, in another show because we've got lots of questions. Thank you, Simon. All right. So from black goo and crystalline deformation to, uh, for Simon Park, there is a lot of misunderstanding about shape-shifting. Can Simon set the record straight, straight by describing what it is and why it happens? Does it only happen to reptilian-human hybrids? Is, an, is it involuntary bodily reaction? And can it be controlled by using meditation and breathing techniques? 
Thank you. That's a really good question. A really good question. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of question that we want uh, to be asked. These very, very specific questions. Thank you. I, I actually think this this is probably somebody who has had a consultation with me. Um, when I consult with people, I do a soul reading, and um, often shape shifting comes up. I will actually say to people, you know, you are capable of shape shifting, and some people actually look at me in horror. Uh, because they have seen pictures on the internet or they've read stuff on the internet. So this is a, a great opportunity for me to um, just put the record straight. When when we rejoin with our DNA, uh, our 12 strands, we are connecting with different soul groups. Uh, some of these DNA strands are, are more in tune with our physical body than others. And when you uh, tune in with a particular strand, you are reconnecting with that family and you have the ability to shape shift into that family two sorts of shape shifting remember i'm not talking about a reptilian full reptilian who comes to earth and then uses an energy disguise as a human that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about your uh, general human type person that you meet every day uh, who has a soul in their body but the soul in their body may not be uh, an earth human soul it could be a whole range of souls when you shapeshift what you're doing is using the energy that is within you and you project it outwards uh, in in metric terms about one millimeter in in old terms about sixteenth of an inch above your face it's almost like when you go to the movies you sit down and the projectors behind you and it throws uh, the the picture onto a screen well imagine that your face is the screen and just fractionally above your face you f you form an energy blanket and you can then begin to alter it appears your face your face isn't changing at all what's happening is that the uh, energy of your of this this blanket is beginning to subtly change the features of your face now, if you have a great deal of a reptilian DNA in you, or a great deal of another form of uh, off-world alien in you, you can physically change. So the first things to go are the eyes. Always, always, always the eyes are the first thing to go, then the rest of the face. Uh, again, I'm stressing, I'm not talking about a full-blooded reptilian alien that comes here and uses a disguise i'm talking about an ordinary type person who who has a physical mammalian body but is capable of shape-shifting what causes shape-shifting it's great emotion um uh, the, the the great elements so you might have anger or <clears throat> um, uh, fear or something like that or, or or love making one of those aspects can cause uh a a person who is connecting with themselves to shapeshift and it's not to be seen as negative it's actually positive the difficulty is that we've seen so many of these blasted videos of, of George Bush junior or senior uh, allegedly shapeshifting and it isn't the, it isn't that that George Bush is shapeshifting that's not the problem <clears throat> the problem is it's George Bush so you know if you can shapeshift you are celebrating the fact that you are drawing down your DNA and you are connecting with different star groups. And I've always said to people, look, go watch Lord of the Rings, the movie, and when you look at some of these elves, the, the makeup is brilliant. Forget the pointy ears. What you've got is a chalk white face, a really white face, and a very long drawn face with high cheekbones. That actually is very similar to about three what I call higher human forms. And people have the ability who can connect with their DNA to begin to bring on a, a shape like that. So it's not just reptilian. Um, so it's a really good chance to be able to, to, to speak about that. It's something that most researchers don't understand. How could they? Uh, and most people don't grasp. How could they? Uh, and so it's, it's an opportunity for me to talk about a subject that has not even really been discussed except to uh, lambast it or to point your finger and say well that's evil it isn't there's nothing wrong in celebrating the fact that you can connect with other uh, other races and this is the fear that humans have we've got to get rid of this fear so yeah great question
So, in, in a way, you're saying it's like um, uh, speaking in a different... A lo- like a local accent or, or tenor um, in order to hang out with your family so you look with a different accent <laughs> if you see what I mean if you can you know, understand the sort of point I'm making it's like in order to blend in with the people that you're trying to communicate with you start looking like them well when a person draws down and connects their DNA mm. they are actually showing that they are a a connected consciousness to the group. So over the last few hundred thousand years, humanity has been um, altered and connected by all these different groups that all have a stake in the human plan. So if that's part of you, why would you want to hide it and bury it? And it's like a, uh, the grandmother that we never talk about. You know, we hide her in, in, in the darkest, tallest tower and we don't talk about her. And that's been the situation with the reptilian connection for a very long time. And we've got to get beyond the fear. We've got to get beyond that. And we've got to understand there are plenty of people out there who have very strong reptilian souls. And they're wonderful because it's not what you are. It's what you choose to be. This is the point, and, and, and we can't really carry on judging people by what we read on the Internet. We have to judge them by their actions and, and what they do and when we meet them. And, and I do get somewhat uh, annoyed when people make statements about others and they never even met them. You know, how do they know? So we're too fearful, we're too judgmental, and we need to actually just realise that the human race is connected to a wide a network of other creatures and they are represented in our genetics so we don't just have two physical strands of dna we have 10 energy strands and those people who are drawing in their energy strands are the ones who are capable of shape-shifting fascinating and the oh wow um there was a question that just passed right through me uh, regarding this, oh well, I mean, uh, shape shifting is not something that necessarily has to happen. I mean, is, when you're talking about the the, the first thing that I was uh, thinking about when you're talking about is like if we were a planet, we'd have an atmosphere. You know, we'd have clouds that were just hovering. You know, you wouldn't know how far above our skin, only a couple of a mil. And it's almost like you're talking as the planet has an atmosphere. So yeah. we have an atmosphere that reflects our beingness somehow. Is that right? Well, the human form is not just flesh and blood and bone. It has a soul and a divine spirit. And it is capable of uh, many things that modern science refuses to accept. And one of those is the projection of energy, whether that's by telepathic thought or whether telekinesis you know um, moving bits of furniture around the room it's not just a poltergeist people can do that so if you can accept that then you can accept that we can project energy now the difficulty is that in most cases um, shape-shifting is not controllable it is something that just occurs and that's why some of the clips on YouTube are accurate there's a couple of a news reader, uh, and they are in my my book accurate, because if a news reader is reading a subject that he or she and there's your clue, uh, are feeling very emotional about because it it's something to do with their personal life or it it, it impacts something's happened to them, then they will trigger something in themselves and quite unintentionally they will they will shape shift now. If that person has got a, a, a predominantly a reptilian soul or a lot of reptilian energy DNA in their body, then they will uh, change and their eyes will become slit, slit-like, like a snake's. But that doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that something um, affected them and they connected with their true selves and they changed. It doesn't mean they're a bad newsreader. or or a bad mother or a bad father it just means that something happened and they connected so you know shape shape, i i I, i've let me give you an example uh i always talk about her because it's the uh it's the the highest group uh, female i worked with who now works for the rothschilds she told me that when she was in university 
um, and she used to be in the, uh, the break period and she would have her friends around her and her eyes would go her eyes would change and they would become reptilian slits and she said she knew it was happening but she couldn't control it <laughs> she couldn't stop it and the people around her would stare at her and she said she would watch them walking away shaking their head convincing themselves that they didn't actually see that and the next morning she'd meet them and they would be completely fine because they had convinced themselves that they hadn't seen anything at all so what i'm the point I'm making is this is much more common than you'd think, but people just say, oh, well, I must have imagined it. It was the way the light was, um, or I had a bad coffee or something like that, because humans are very good at talking themselves out of what they've actually experienced. So it's very common, happens all the time, and there will be people listening to this who can stand in front of a mirror and can partially do it. And I say to people, start practicing, stand in front of a mirror and do it. Um, and the moment you start doing it, you are connecting with who you are. So, yeah, it's uh, an exciting and uh, a really, really interesting topic. Fantastic. So does that mean that one day we'll be able to be invisible as well? Invisible? Well, I suppose we could buy a great big eraser and rub ourselves out. Um, <laughs> then we'd be bumping into each other. No, because there isn't, uh, to my knowledge, there isn't a member of the, the human family that is an invisible being. What we can do if we survive is evolve enough and go up the dimensions so that ultimately we can join source and be at 12th dimensional level, which means that we won't have any sort of physical body at all. So we won't be invisible, but we would have a, a sort of a, 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 an energy shimmy or a sort of like a heat haze around us ah yeah because this is this is what i'm you know considering that what you're talking about this uh, energy radiance thing is yeah. you know anyway so look let's 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 keep going because now here's another fantastic win uh question um and this is a scene jim uh what are some of the ways an individual can sort of do a past life reading on themselves to maybe help the unique individual personality point gain access to more more soul information and experiences to help right now fantastic Right. Um, you either can or you can't. Um, in other words, to access your past memories in a controlled way is in incredibly difficult. How most people experience it as is with a flashback or little snippets coming now and again. So you imagine like a video playing, just a five-second video. It's usually triggered by... Uh, an activity, whether it's a uh, bright colour or somebody says something on the radio or you see something or somebody or you go visit a place and you think, my goodness, I know this place. I know where the door will be. I know where the back window will be. And it's these things that overcome the 3D uh, control mechanism that people have and access the real truth in them and they then can begin to understand they've had uh, a past life. Uh, if if a person suspects they have a past life, there are a number of people you can go to who are very genuine, who can assist them. But if they want to do it themselves, then they really have to find a quiet time. And I mean quiet. You've got to turn your plug your phones. You've got to just make sure you're not going to be disturbed. You've also got to ensure that for the for the few days beforehand, you're very careful about what you eat and what you drink. You also have to be in a position where you're not uh, stressed at work and that's very difficult for most of us but ultimately if you can put yourself into a, quite a calm quiet place then if you have some techniques of meditation and you have some very useful music which help you uh, it is possible through what i call uh, portal objects and i, I mean if someone was of a a, a, Siri, a sirius or a, a, a cyrus soul then the crystal skull of course is part of their family so if they were to sit there and hold uh, a crystal skull that would enable them to open up some of that communication network if they were palladian then they would get should get a, a lovely carving of a dolphin and literally sit there and unhold the dolphin you're looking at something to anchor you to a point in time and then you can then backtrack down this corridor and see what you can find um, if I had the time I, I would write a series of um, or workshops or do workshops to show people how to do it it is possible but it is sometimes a lot easier and quicker to go to someone who can regress you and take you back 
but it, yeah an, another good question jp that would be a great web we'd be uh, we're actually um i just want to announce this is a first announcement we're going to be doing a webinar next friday with alex collier <laughs> You heard it first here. Um, I'll I'll be posting the uh, the publicity soon. So, um, Simon, if you want to do webinars, we're going to have the the system set up. It'll be wallspirit.tv, and uh, uh, we're going to do some interesting things. So that well, might, I, might be I'm a possibility. Del- I'm delighted to hear that. Yeah. I mean, you know, and yeah. anyone who's listened to me knows that I've always spoken incredibly highly of Alex. Uh, I've always said that Alex Collier was genuine. Um, Alex Collier is connecting with people from the fifth dimension, whereas I connect with the fourth. Um, and he's a, a very brave person, and uh, I'm really glad that he's still, you know, ticking along and doing what he's done. So, uh, yeah, very good man, and uh, I shall certainly be listening to that. I tell you, um, this I have to just just put it out there that he is really destitute. You know, really, he needs he needs some really good care. So, if anybody's in Colorado, in the area of Colorado, that could help him out in any way, he's living in a he's living in a Land Rover that has got no suspension. You know, it's a really bad situation. So, um, if you if anybody feels from this that they want to help him, uh, go to alexcollier.org and donate. That button goes straight to his account. Like straight, he can spend that straight away. So. Okay. Um, JP, can I just yeah. just say something? Can I yeah. just go ahead? Say something quickly. Um, I don't even think that Alex has said this, so he may not say it. But basically, if anybody goes on YouTube, they will find videos of him early, early videos, and he talks about aliens, etc. And there was never a problem. And then he talked about the missing children. And although, to my knowledge, Alex has never said anything. Uh, I'm prepared to say that he received a very serious death threat. And that's why there's no videos of him for over 10 years. There's just nothing out there. And when he re-emerges, he's an, an older man. And you look at the, 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 the early videos, and then you say, well, wh- where's, wh- where's he been? And the fact was that in, I, I believe that he took the threat incredibly seriously. He stopped doing what he was doing, uh, and then his consciousness grew and he decided he couldn't hide it and he had to get back and when he did uh, they the elite attacked him and they bankrupt him and uh, he's been under attack ever since so he's a very genuine person um, and I'm really glad that he's not succumbed so if anybody can spare five dollars for ten dollars for him then please do so I tell you, you know, I, I was almost well. I was in tears when I spoke to him, and uh, you know, I, I haven't got any money myself. But you know, here you go. Well, I just, that, I just that, sold a crystal. JP, Here's the thing, yeah. JP, that's the problem. That that the people who are fighting against the system, the system strangles us. It, it keeps us. I mean, I run my connecting consciousness on a shoestring, and if it wasn't for 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 the wonderful charity of people who donate. Uh, a few dollars and a few quid here and there we'd all be in a trouble the people who are supporting the system they're the ones who are really well paid because they are the pillars holding up the system of course the system's rewarding these people because they are products they're just little robots but those of us who uh, are trying to break and fight and get free and try to wake the world up of course the system turns on us and that actually is a sign of people who are genuine those of us who are struggling are struggling for a reason those of us who are rolling in cash are rolling in cash for a reason so you know i'd say to people you know just look at round you and and ask yourself uh, who are genuine and who isn't genuine so yeah i, I I'm, I'm really glad that alex is there and yes jp I, i'll certainly be listening to that all right thank you now we're coming up to the top of the hour but one thing i'd like to draw back is you said something about fixing the electricity or doing something about electricity and this is it's really close to my heart i'm personally making a um uh, a smart a low voltage smart house that had that lights rooms and turns the lights on and off automatically very energy saving very energy efficient and i know that you're involved in an energy uh production company that uh, that makes um uh, wind turbines um is is that where you were going with that um well i don't know because <laughs> um, we were talking earlier right at the beginning of the show you said i'll talk about that later um well, is about electricity did i mention electricity yeah 
Maybe, maybe, maybe I have. I've had yeah. a quick abduction, and I can't <laughs> can. Can we have our Simon back, please? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> don't make me laugh. Um, well, quick, a quick word on mm-hmm. it. it uh, there are many people actually throughout the planet who actually understand about zero point energy. There are many people who um, want to put up their, um, their solar panels and their, their wind turbines. That isn't the issue. The issue is the corporations. Because if you control a resource, you then control it and you sell it to the public. But if you sell direct to the public, then you don't need that middleman, you don't need that corporation. So the issue isn't there is this alternative technology. The issue is how do you get it out to the public without ending up in a ditch? So that is the question I think that most people uh, who have invented anything that's really, really empowering have really thought. I mean, we all know about Nikola Tesla and uh, the issues he came up with when he tried to uh, sell his product or push his product out. Um, yes, I, I'm, I'm involved with a, with a company that uh, is into renewables, and um, you know we would like to uh, ensure that uh, ordinary, average people have access to uh, cheaper energy. And you know we don't particularly like the idea of these big companies charging an arm and a leg so that you can read a book at night time. Uh, and I have a personal philosophy. It's not the philosophy of the, of the company that I am in, um, but. Uh, I have a personal com- philosophy, which is I don't think anybody should pay to have to keep warm. I don't think you should have to pay to heat your house because heat is something that keeps you alive. And, you know, if you go out on a summer's day and you stand there and you feel the sun on your body, how much did you pay for that? Nothing. You didn't pay for it because it was free. That's free energy. So why in God's name, when we go inside, do we have to pay to warm ourselves so this is all a trick it's a massive con it's the small tiny one percent of the of the hundred percent of the population who control the resources and make their money because they have deprived us of having access to what is free so th- this is my philosophy and i will do anything and everything i can to ensure that people have access to uh, the, the necessities of life they shouldn't have to pay for it. You know, if you want the latest mobile phone, then yes, of course you pay for it. But for goodness sake, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in Great Britain. And two years ago, in, in the area that I live, a person was put in prison for 30 days for stealing bread. 30 days in prison Ridiculous. for going into a shop and stealing bread. What on earth is this about? I mean, yes, if they'd gone in and run out with a, an expensive perfume, but this is where this whole system is totally wrong and it needs to be changed. So we just look at one aspect and you find another aspect and another aspect, and in the end you realise that it is a philosophy of a small group of people who don't want to share. You know, this is my cake. You're not even going to have the, the, the walnut on the top. <laughs> well, you can have this little bit, but you've got to pay for it. So that's what's wrong. It's greed, because I don't have a problem with people making money. I don't have a pe- profit. You know, profit is fine, but it's greed. And this is what needs to change. And this is what my own little connecting consciousness is about. It's what you're about and many other people are about. It's about connecting up values and ideals and challenging the system and saying, this can't be right. You know, it wasn't right in the Victorian times. It wasn't right a 100 years ago. It's not right now. But people are more empowered and people now are prepared to actually say no. And hopefully this is what will happen over the next two and a half years as human consciousness develops. Excellent. Now, to that end, a recording that I made here in this very studio uh, a couple of years ago... um, this song is uh, uh, sung by Amanda and written by Amanda Cazalet, and uh, it's called Changeling, and I thought it was quite appropriate. <laughs> this is called Changeling. Solitude, a 
Darling does was the name. Of the, does darling want a cup of tea? Yes, darling does. <laughs> that's, that's why. That's why they were called darling does. Anyway, um, welcome back to Connecting Consciousness uh, with Simon Parks, and uh, we are back with more questions. And again, segueing nicely, question seven from Bluin: uh, What sound frequencies should we listen to raise our vibration level? And what frequencies should we avoid? <laughs> Very complex question, really. Well, com- uh, Simon, on you go. Um, well, two, two, two ways I would answer that. First of all, depending on your soul, uh, your connection, and um, I guess you'd have to have a chat with me to find out what your soul was if you weren't sure yourself. And depending on that, there are certain sounds that you can listen to uh, just simply on on YouTube, which would assist you in meditation. Now, and separately, we talked a little about about how um, I think the letter A was altered by was it eight cycles? I think we talked about yeah, from four four zero to four three two. Yeah. Well, what we need to ensure is that if we're listening to any music, particularly meditation music, um, on uh, the internet that we really are listening to something that's not just concocted on the back of this altered sound. So if you can find a website or a company doing meditation music, 
at the decent good earth frequencies with the, the, the Schumann resonance of the earth then that is what you should be doing depending on your soul you can then uh, use other items to assist you in that so it, it, I, I can't run through this whole list I mean depending on the, the, the soul background of that individual then I would then say well this is appropriate but obviously at this stage all I can say to you is avoid um, the more modern music and uh, attempt to connect with your star family that's a very interesting point because every star family has got its own tuning it's got its own key and frequency and uh you know one day i'm going to make a big pie chart that's going to have 12 divisions and it will have all of the the race the strand the note the color the geometric form the personality type uh, is going to have everything because <laughs> this is this is the big alchemy question isn't it what how does everything connect to everything else how do yes, it, 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 if you think of Harry Potter <clears throat> and the Philosopher's Stone, and uh, you think back <clears throat> to the days of the, the Renaissance, and um, what alchemy was understood was turning a base metal into gold, and was called the Philosopher's Stone, <clears throat> but of course that wasn't what it was about at all, it was actually about the twelve strands. The This was just a, a smokescreen, the real philosopher's stone was the secret that they were looking for that do what we're talking about it drew, to draw down the 10 strands of dna the philosopher's stone of alchemy was literally rising to higher consciousness that's why it's called the renaissance period because this was the time of of great minds and a spiritual uprising which really um had nothing had happened since the middle middle ages so yes, each individual has their own key, has their own, um, I don't like the word triggers because it has negative connotations, but it can also be positive, uh, have positive triggers which allow them to connect with themselves at a faster rate. So uh, without knowing the, the questioner, without having seen the picture of them, I can't tell you what the, or tell them what their soul is, therefore I can't give them an answer because I, I work visually I have to see a picture or a video to help somebody so yeah we're gonna have to find a way of, of, of uh, you you having uh, uh, well I don't know maybe it needs to be like a, a, a class situation where you answer questions in, in groups it just well, seems yeah. to be the number of questions you're getting asked and the work that you're, you're needing to do is like outweighing your ability to be present in the single body <laughs> well that's interesting because somebody else said that to me um, and that was very interesting, and I'm giving that a lot of thought. <laughs> looking for, <laughs> looking for your clones. I, actually, well, well, uh, apparently, I I have clones. Apparently, I've been told I have clones uh, in case I'm taken out. Uh, wow! If I'm taken out, then they can't. What I've been told is they cannot afford for me to reincarnate in a baby and grow up because it just isn't the time. So there are clones of me, so that if I get taken out, I come back again. But so far, I'm in the original body. All right. I was just going to say, is are you a backup? <laughs> not, not, no, I'm still the original mm. me. Well, this isn't, uh, I, I don't want to go too far into this. It's a bit uh, of an odd out, out thing, but I had a conversation with my guides, and I said, well, do they, uh, they have any clones? And, yeah, they, they, they're trying to ask questions of clones of me, but... Uh, the, 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 it's me that you know it's the me behind the me that they want to talk to and not the clone you know they're talking to just the, the meat suit is that a possibility or am i just making that all up and i also said i don't i don't consent anymore so i stopped that right and my, my my understanding is that when a a person is is removed or the physical body is removed the soul from that body is placed into the clone so it is that person but the replication is nearly perfect and the difference is that divine source didn't make the clone so the physical body and the soul were made by divine source and so a clone is not a creature of divine divine uh, energy divine creation it is a construct made by another intelligence but not a divine intelligence so um, we shouldn't uh, negatively brush away clones 
uh, it's not the clone that's the problem it's what's inside if it's a good thing inside it it's fine because all a clone body is is a vehicle to allow that person to do what they're doing and if they're doing bad things then that's wrong if they're doing good things that's good so again it's 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 lack of knowledge by uh, the general public it's um uh, fear and uh, a misunderstanding of um, this sort of Frankenstein or, or Frankenstein's monster type creation. Excellent, thank you. That's a that's a really important um, questions at the moment because, like, how do we know if it's real or Memorex? You know. Okay, so mm, ah, more great questions. Okay, so here we go. Um, can you explain the difference in the various races? Hmm, well, maybe it's not such a good question. Um, like the Arcturians, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, bird people, ant people, Orions, along with some of the disinformation on the internet about them. Can some star beings on the planet now, as human, have had lifetimes with all these other races? Well, I think the, the second question you've already answered. But um, uh, do you want to... Uh, I know you've probably answered this several times, but, like, who are the players that we know? Who are the different kinds of races that we're talking about uh, that, that, are, that are involved without, without, you know, immediate situation? Right. There are two things, first of all. There is the literally the alien spacecraft and the creatures, whatever they are, and we say that is this race, that is that race. But there have been these people incarnating in human bodies for a very long time on the planet Earth. And many of the star children or indigo kids, uh, that's the terminology that I think the Americans use, and I don't have a problem with it, uh, over the last 20 years, 25 years, are uh, incarnating from the fourth dimension, from, in British English, the Cyrus constellation, and in American English, the Sirius constellation. So a large portion of the star kids are coming from the fourth dimension. Uh, we do not have the time um, to give justice to this question because I would have to go through every different race and explain the differences and if somebody is very keen and wants to know then they can book uh, a 30 minute consultation with me and, and I'll tell them exactly who they are and if they're really cheeky and some people are really cheeky and they hold up their pictures oh well this is my brother, this is my uncle and I'm, I'll do it as well so they'll get three or four for the price of one Wow, um, and you know it's not, it's not like it's uh, exorbitant either uh, consultation I, I, um, yeah, I don't I've never anyone who knows and listens knows that I'm very careful and I don't knock other people I don't criticize other people because that's not professional um, but I, I do know that, that many people charge a huge amount of money and there's one person I'm not going to mention his name it's an American guy who charges a thousand dollars for a consultation um, and, and I just you know but the, the problem is you know uh, JP, that because I'm so cheap, money-wise, some Americans say, oh, well, he can't be any good. He can't be any good because he's so cheap. And that's how they've been mind-controlled to believe. And I say, no, actually, I'm very cheap because I want everybody to be able to access me. And to be honest, uh, people who don't have any money, I do it for nothing anyway. There are a number of people who are down on their luck or they're on uh, handouts, state benefits, and they're really good people, and I don't charge them. I just do it for nothing. Um, so I think that information of this nature should be available to everyone, because how can you fully know yourself? How can you come to terms with who or what you are if you don't know your history? You know, it, this is the problem. We're all kept in the dark in the sense that we're told this is a history book, this is the history of the world, whether it be America or Europe. Um, but who talks about our own history? We go to, to an astrologer and get a star reading. We can go and get some past life regression. But who tells us who you are? And that's what I do. I tell people who they are. And then I tell them what their attributes are and why they have this particular habit or that habit. Um, and the object isn't because I want to impress them with what I am. It's because I want them to go away and think, ah, now I understand. And they do things that improve their soul and make them happier so i can't give full answer to that question it would just take too long so maybe this is a subject for a webinar it sounds like a perfect subject for a webinar 
why not? Yeah. So maybe that's maybe that's the subject of the first one. Thank you. Uh, uh, right. Okay. So from Kangulio, question: I see people with silver eyes up to eight lots now in two months. I can't find anything on the net for explanation. Anyone else had this? Simon, have you come across anyone else with this? Uh, I haven't come across them, but I'm aware of them. Um, it's to do with the pigmentation. There is an off-world uh, human group. It's a shame that the 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 uh, questioner isn't available to to answer back questions because I would like to to know the facial features. I would expect the facial features to be quite slender, with high cheekbones, quite a pointed chin, um, thinnish hair, uh, and very very thin light eyebrows. Uh, if that person would like to give you the email on that, I'd be interested. Yes, I am aware of them. It's to do with pigmentation. It's 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 uh, uh, on the other scale. Why? alien men in black uh, have no eyebrows and have no hair it's to do with the genetics that have been altered to make them just enough human that's right oh uh, hmm, yes the other big meme of the moment um, what was his name Bob Lash Lamb no Lash Yes. Yeah. The, 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 so, what's the story with this dude? I mean, he's got like more more military equipment than Batman. I mean, he he has an underwater SUV. Nobody has an underwater SUV. What's the deal, Simon? You must know a bit about this guy. Well, um, there are two 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 things. You can either be a very successful business person and you've made the money yourself through. Uh, particular companies and you have a real interest in toys and you want to be a survivalist and so you you do that and the other thing is that you work for in a 3d sense a particular organization and you're very helpful to them and they allow you to uh, develop your interests and therefore you have access to uh, technology that whilst doesn't appear to be alien is still very advanced because you can't buy in the high street so you know if you were to talk to to richard branson uh, the owner of virgin media i'm sure richard branson has some very very uh, wonderful bits of equipment that um you wouldn't be able to obtain even if you were a senator or a congressman or a member of parliament um, you know, if, if 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 I met a, a very wealthy, very very wealthy businessman, I would expect him uh, to have a steel sliding door behind his back office, which would go down into uh, uh, some form of bunker area, where he and his family and his best friends could hide out for a number of months, and maybe a tunnel connecting somewhere else. That is much more common than you would imagine. And for those people who can't do that, then they have bought shares in um, such underground bunkers so it's on a sliding scale you need to have connection with very powerful corporations this is where the power is of course very powerful corporations and you have to be a key player in some role that they've got and you have to be uh, upfront enough to be videoed on youtube or uh make it known that you have all these toys and you're quite happy to show them off. So I'm going to be fairly careful because a number of individuals um, are actually victims. A number of these people are actually victims and not the great, happy, powerful people they appear to be. They are just being manipulated. And he was obviously um, very clued up now he said he was an alien hybrid yeah. so do you think that well let, let me let me lay out something because you can't say what it is some there might be some you know uh, danger in, in what you might say so let, if i say something and you can say mm, yeah. uh, but uh if say i was uh, an arcturian hybrid or mm. you know and i knew stuff or part of my soul that was coming in in order to hook into this body new stuff like um, uh, matrix uh, algorithm programming or something like that 
um, that uh, I would um, I would be able to um, you know I, I would work for a firm and they would pay me and I would do my thing and they would pay me for the things that I do and um, uh, and I would have, be paid lots of money that I don't really want to show off about so <laughs> maybe I'll dig a hole and buy lots of weapons <laughs> I don't know I'm just trying to put my my mind in this person Right. Um, the military has been doing it for years. What, what they have is a, 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 almost a breeding program uh, that they recruit people who have ESP, extrasensory perception. Um, they've been doing it since the 50s. So they, they target people who are either genuine human type people or hybridized hybrids who end up working in the military using their special skills. Well, over the last 35 to 40 years, the corporations have taken the place of government. And so the corporations now employ exactly the same sort of people as do the uh, military um, because they want those skills. But what you've described to me, having to be careful here, what you've described to me is an over and above that. Um, it may or may not surprise the listeners to know that from time to time, exchange programs run on planet Earth. So uh, we, as a race, are presented with specimen A. And specimen A uh, is tracked and followed and guarded. And specimen A then has, you know, Harvard, uh, Yale College all mapped out. And then they go and they are already going to work in this corporation. And it is part of a program of acceptance where that individual um, helps to answer some of the questions that the corporations have been stuck on for the last five or ten years and basically the hybrid is here on holiday so the hybrid needs downtime and because the hybrid is in a semi-human body it wants one thing which is experiences because when you are a full alien you don't have the same emotional need to experience when you come into this reality it's about touch it's about looking at a rainbow and seeing how beautiful it is. It's about looking at a, a stallion galloping across the field and seeing how beautiful it is. These things most alien creatures don't understand. So when you get a hybridized person working for the corporations, they want the extreme. They want to be able to feel, smell, touch uh, and, and live an exhilarating lifestyle because it's new to them. So that's the best answer. Ah, so, so it's like, okay, well, what can I do with this body? Right. Oh, let's throw it off a cliff. Oh, I'm in a wingsuit. Yay! <laughs> and, and it's a, a very kind of um, uh, uh, extreme experiences because it's a bit like, you know, driving, driving somebody else's car, isn't there's it? One, there's one more thing to add to that. If you are truly enlightened, you know you cannot die. So your physical body can die, but what's in you doesn't die. And when you understand that, you have no fear of death. And so some of these um, beings will do things that most people would go, oh, that's a bit dangerous, isn't it? But if you don't fear of death, why does it bother you? That's a very important question, isn't it? That's a, that, And uh, isn't that one of the biggest lessons of all of our spiritual teachers throughout history yeah that death doesn't you know death is not the meaning uh that you should do things anyway so uh here we go this is a good question it's from uh from nikki out there uh, uh from your group simon has said the war for consciousness in the uk will be an energetic emotional war how will this be fought well there we go the good color nikki hi that was nice to see you on saturday um, I've never wanted to push or advocate violent insurrection um, it's going to come but I'm not going to be the one that says now we do it I think that human consciousness will just be backed into a corner to the point that it won't be pushed around any further uh, it's rather like um, the Boston Tea Party when the uh, American people were not going to be pushed around by the British taxation system anymore and something just snaps but the energy war is a war that has been taking place for a very long time I mean the war between Atlantis and Lumeria 
wasn't just a physical war it was like a a, a cyber war you know there is a, a very interesting app that you can get uh, legally and it shows a map uh, of the world and it's in real time uh, showing you where all the cyber attacks are coming ah, from yes the viking yep and where it's going to now that's energy so in a 3d world we are already attacking each other i'm using that word loosely uh, energetically and we're doing it for profit and money of course that's the point and what i'm talking about is an energy war that is not about profit and money it's about breaking free it's about people deciding that they've had enough and they're not going to play the game anymore and I, I use this analogy because it's important to the people of britain particularly so others will not know about it. a man called jimmy savile who was one of the most evil predatory people alive who preyed on children the, the word paedophile is a very uh, recent word um, but he was a very very evil paedophile and he'd been doing it for 50 years now he did it for 50 years because he was protected and covered up now why did that come out it came out because human consciousness has evolved to such a point that it could no longer be hidden and the governments around the world now are really struggling because it's harder and harder and harder for them to keep lies from the public human consciousness is evolving and there's going to come a point in each country where something is positioned in law which is just too much so at the moment in america uh, the the law is on statute that every baby born in america must be immunized and actually they want to chip them and the law hasn't been enacted until i think it's next fall where no child in america will be allowed into a nursery or a play group unless they've been inoculated and that's very dangerous but the point i'm making is that these things are going to back parents or back people up against the wall and in the end people are going to say no i'm not doing it so the the energy war will be created when the governments overstep the mark and in great britain we saw it with our prime minister margaret thatcher who brought out a, a tax called the poll tax and the population of britain said no and there was mass riots and of course the government had to back down and it cost the prime minister her job so it it happens precedent has been set but we're talking about consciousness not one particular policy we're talking about people who are saying i've had enough of this we know it can be better so i'm not talking about guns or, or bombs in the street i'm talking about people working as a mass i'd love a hundred thousand people just to sit down in uh, the city of london and block all the traffic you know the police force of great britain is one hundred thousand that's the number of police officers in britain in the united states of america it's around about a million so if you had a hundred thousand people all sit down in central london the police force couldn't do anything about it what are they going to do bring out the army and shoot people this is in effect where the energy war will come but if the government whoever it is has got any brains they'll start to make some changes because we are on a collision course every major uh, western country and some eastern countries are on a collision course with their own people and they are doing everything they can to try and trick them or con them or control them whether it's through energy waves or fluoride or goodness knows what ultimately it's not working people are resisting so when i talk about an energy situation i'm talking about heat that builds up uh, when uh, a spacecraft enters the earth's atmosphere i'm talking about a, a human spacecraft uh, enters the earth's atmosphere it goes hot because there's friction between it and the atmosphere and a resistance builds there is a friction and a heat building between humanity and the one percent of the world that leads and controls that humanity so that is the friction that is what's going to happen so i'm very confident i'm sitting back and watching what will happen and ready to play my part whatever that may be when the time comes yeah that's right and and uh i remember i was there at the poll tax be um march uh -huh. and um one of the things you, I, you were the, you were the man with the cone i was the one with the drum ah. 
And I had a, it was a special drum. It was a talking drum, an African talk, the deco booty, you know, the t- talking drum. And um, it was a very joyous conversation that I had until the weather changed. And then started thing, things started kicking in. I, they, I totally believe that they changed the weather. I could, f- I sensed the vibration change that day, that moment. It was very joyous until we got about halfway through Trafalgar Square, uh, and then um, a concerted effort that uh, uh, black horses started arriving um, or uh, black troops, on, you know, black policemen, and they drove the van through the crowd. They drove a van through a very densely packed crowd, you know, about 10, 15 miles an hour, really, you know, very aggressive. Um, and uh, and then course, people started yeah, throwing yeah, bottles at the yeah, van, of JP, course. Sorry. JP, when, when we talk about black policemen, of course, we're talking about the uniforms. Sorry, sorry, yeah, not black horses. Not black horses of the... No, yeah, no, we're no. We're not talking about the skin colour. Uh, yeah, or, or even made of black material, like yeah, carbon fibre. The, the black combat jackets, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, th- again, it goes back, because the policemen nowadays wear black and they don't wear blue. And then, exactly, that's deliberate. Yeah, yeah go on. So, uh, so the question um, is: There is the the how? Yeah. So the the energetic war is a kind of uh, it's like a kind of psychic or a, your living room becomes Trafalgar Square. Your living room has its atmosphere changed by the powers that be in order to influence how your behaviour is and what choices you're going to make. Ooh. Now, it's the, the question is all about vibration. So how do we keep our vibration high enough to see what's going on without being... How do we... How do we now, and I think you impl, impl, implied it earlier um, when you talked about, you know, intellectually um, uh, confused by uh, the information that's coming at you from all sides. Um, uh, are you are you getting where I'm where I'm going? How do people rise above that? What are the what are the ways people can do that? Yeah, they've got to connect with their selves. They have got to listen to themselves. What we loosely call the higher self, <clears throat> what I specifically refer to as the ten strands of energy DNA. That's the higher self. So that is where the truth is. And that is where the truth is. And they need to connect with other people. That's why I formed my Connecting Consciousness group, uh, not just in my country, but in many of the countries. I'd like to have, you know, a representation in every country in the world. Because we get the truth to each other. We form a network. We pass the truth. We, we don't fall for the tricks and, and, and the traps that the system plays. And this is what we have to do. We have to form groups around ourselves that are secure, cannot be infiltrated by agents uh, or disinformation uh, we keep it sovereign and we only trust ultimately what we think is the right answer and that way it, it doesn't matter what they do what they shower on us what what rubbish or lies they pump at us it just doesn't go into us you know so many uh, spiritual and psychic people are no longer reading the newspaper whether it's online or on hard copy they're not watching the television they are instinctively blocking out the system's ability to uh, infiltrate them and give them uh, false ideas and this is a realization and and this is how people can begin to understand the truth and the internet is the answer Uh, again you have to to discern what's there but there is going to come a time when they the the elite will take the internet down and that's why I want people to form those groups now, um, be as strong as you can, and believe in yourself. And I always say to people, look, ask advice from people you trust, but ultimately you must make the decision. So that's my philosophy. So this is the this is how we, uh, and I think this is the, the the way we evolve uh, we we must be very careful not to get into groupthink 
which is you know just because somebody in the group says something that it's the truth it, the the group has to f everybody has to do their own filtering and feel free to say oh no i don't agree with that i think you know let's see let's see what simon says and it's funny it's like you, know, you get this whole simon says thing anyway um it's uh the next question uh, is all right so uh, first of all there's there's um roman russia is uh, uh volunteering for uh, russian translation so thank you very much um uh, but uh, I think the most important question is that question, how to meditate correctly. I want to speak to ETs, the creator, to hire me, to say, I want to feel this connection as a support too. So, uh, uh, First of all, if yes. someone's offering to translate into Russian, that is fantastic. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, that, would, that would be really good. Um, I have a, have a number of people who say to me, I want to... Uh, meet ETs or I want to do this I want to do that um, and I say that you know you can't do all of it at once you have to choose what's the most important to you and if you want to meet or communicate with ETs why what what is it that you're seeking what is it that you want it is far better that somebody communicates with themselves and builds up <clears throat> a full understanding of who they are and just through a divine process which is not tainted by anything that you know a government or a, a corporation or an agency has done so i would say that um a form of meditation now if you <clears throat> if you have a proportion of reptilian in you it is very hard to meditate people with either a reptilian soul or sizable reptilian energy find it very difficult to meditate and there are different ways of meditating um, and i had a conversation with one of my clients only on friday we talked about this because she said to me no i just can't meditate and i said well that's not surprising because your percentage of reptilian so what one does an alternative form of meditation is to find a hobby and i don't mean a hobby like stamp collecting or something that's made by people but find something that's to do with the natural world so for instance you might want to photograph uh, flowers and then find the name of them and, and form a catalog uh, i don't mean pick the poor things and squash them in a book because you know it's like these butterfly collectors i just can't understand why you would see a beautiful butterfly and kill it and then stick <laughs> it in a jar because i've got that one now but wasn't it happier when it was out there flying poor things only live for about two weeks but anyway, back to the point. So it's not always meditation in the traditional sense of the word, sitting cross-legged with your hands out, isn't everyone's cup of tea. So you have to find another way to communicate with source, with the creational energy. So if you can connect with nature because that was created by the same thing that created you, then you can form a bond with that and a deep understanding <coughs> excuse me so uh horses for courses as we say in britain in other words find what gives you peace and that serenity and allows you to uh, ask the questions that only you can ask and only you can answer again if people if people sort of have a chat with me then we can talk more about that but ultimately you can't talk to ETs and find out about yourself and do this and do that because you are only an organic living creature on the outside uh, and your 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 soul can can want to do it and that's why this person has written in and asked that but the physical capabilities of your body aren't up to it your, your soul is energy and and works at the speed of light and some more but your physical body can only work at the speed of the chemical instructions and electrical information that passes to the to the muscles so we can't do all those things and it is better to aim for one topic and to choose that topic say why do i want to do it is it because i think it'll be cool or is it because it will advance me spiritually so again the individual needs to ask that question and go forward this is these are the important questions how do we get to the from you know from this this morass that we find ourselves to a positive outlook a positive future and um so to the next question yeah so there we go roman i hope you are there right okay hang on sorry i'm just 
so many different Where, where's angles. that husky dog of yours you told me there was a husky dog there and we've been nearly nearly two hours and i haven't heard it bark once um he has been laying by my feet hello pip yeah yeah we're talking about you hello come on come say hello there's no dog there at all yeah <laughs> it's all in the mind yeah Jimmy. all right hang on let me just let me <laughs> just make him jump up the gravy bone you want the gravy bone? He's, he's been asleep. He must have been asleep, because he's all no, dozy. There's no, there's no dog there. There you go. Can you him? Crunching it? No, that's you. You're yeah. eating. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm eating gravy bones, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, people who uh, wonder what the dog looks like, if you look at my um, uh, wolf spirit host, um, that's that's uh, that's the, the dog, uh, the dog's eyes, Pip. No, you've been asleep, haven't you, boy? Yeah, haven't you? Oh, he's, he's actually settled down. I think it was a bit, it was, you know, coming here is a bit traumatic on the bus. I'm sure. <laughs> he doesn't go on buses very much, so he's, he's all tired out. Oh, look at you. Look at you. He's got that lovely look. Anyway, so, yes. Um, and where are we now? Let's, uh, let's get some more of these fantastic yes. questions. Um, the, the, the reason that, you know, there's, there's so many uh, different um, angles that, you know, you have so many different topics that people ask you. I'm trying to get a, a nice broad sweep of the, the topics that, you know, and maybe even, you know, go further than you have done on others. That's the best. The, the best thing is, people, if, if you can find a topic that Simon hasn't spoken about, it's like jazz. What are the notes you don't hear? Play those. Anyway, um, okay, right. Um, now, there's been a few questions about Daddy, um, uh, as you call him, uh, and one of them is involved in the whole um, uh, Blue Avian situation, which is that there's, uh, I don't know, are, are you aware of the big uh, Gonzalez went to meet the big Draco guy who said, we're going to kill everybody if you don't let us all go, um, and um, uh, then stormed out of the room, followed by his insectoid cohorts. Have you heard that story yet? No, I haven't heard that one. That's a, that's a new one for me. All right. Well, this is the latest from the, uh, the Cory Good. So this is... Um, Gonzalez told told Corey this, and Corey told David, and then David told us. So that's how it gets here. Um, <laughs> with all the, but th this is one of the big memes: is that there's a big Draco guy who's hanging around and, and um, dictating things to everybody. Um, and uh, but there was a question that kind of related personally to. Uh, I'm trying to try kind of zoom it back to it. Um, because I wanted to... Uh, all right. Uh, kind of... All right, that's another one. Um, yeah, the, the, is he um, also who we know as Anu? Who do we know? Who is Daddy, as far as we are mythologically concerned? Right. Because I don't know the, the nature of <clears throat> the story, I'm not sure which... Draconis, <clears throat> this guy is referring to. There are more than one Draconis, um, so it may not be the king, the High Lord. It may be one of his sons or a representative of the family line. And uh, just because he's there speaking doesn't mean it's the king. Um, I referred to this creature as Daddy when I was little. I call him Dad now because I've grown up and seems quite happy with that. Uh, the uh, boss man may or may not be Anu. The boss man could be one of either what we would call Enki or Enli. Uh, Anu, if anybody researches or understands properly, spent very little time on this planet because he had an empire to maintain. And uh, just like any true Machiavellian leader, knew that if he was going to be got rid of it would be his sons who would do it and so he gave his sons a project several projects a trillion 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 light years away from him so that they couldn't uh, mass uh, an army or mass a political uh, movement within the royal court <clears throat> and they would be stuck in a godforsaken place beautiful water world but a godforsaken place off the beaten track and they would be so busy doing what they were doing they wouldn't be able to plot to overthrow him 
So we have to be careful that we are not necessarily thinking of this as Anu, but of one of the two sons, the legitimate sons. And as a result of that, uh, unless I had a proper description of the particular Draconis, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, you know, people say they all look the same. Well, they do, but there are some interesting distinctive features of the three leading uh, members of that family. So, um, uh, Dad is appreciably taller than the two sons, and they they live for a very long time, and they then uh, reclone their body. So the soul uh, is the same soul, but will be in a cloned body. So they'll just go on for a very long time. Uh, this is the same uh, creature that is in the Vatican. It is the same creature or his representative that goes to see the Rothschilds. And there are a number of um, groups that he or his representative will visit uh, maybe once or twice a year. So that's about all I can say, really, um, except that he is a very stern chap who doesn't have a sense of humour, who uh, has very piercing eyes, and can see into most creatures with the power of his mind and knows what people are thinking before they even know it themselves. So he's a very um, strong adversary or protagonist because if you are trying to have a debate or hold any sort of talk to him, he will know immediately when you're lying. And that's why it's very difficult for people like the Rothschilds, because when they all sit round in their circle and then the representative arrives, they don't try and play games. They just make a report and then they shut up. <clears throat> and same in the Vatican. Although the Vatican, actually, some of the um, Jesuits in the Vatican are attempting to put pressure on Dad um, because they want to try and uh, engineer uh, a more advantageous position for the Vatican in the next coming five or ten years. And so they are looking for ways to manipulate Dad. So I can't really say much more because I haven't read that report, um, but it does sound very interesting. The only thing I would say is there's a bit of oddness here. Is You reported that the Draconis said let me go um i don't quite understand no 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 he said uh, let let all the people basically all the the powers that be and all the minions um let them escape or let you know uh, don't punish them uh or I'll, or there'll be consequences right so what what you're talking about is um uh his workforce or or those who have supported him um that doesn't make sense to me because he wouldn't give a damn I know dad he wouldn't give a damn what he would worry about are certain bloodline families where he has uh, family members who through marriage uh, or through genetic connections uh, and then he would just offer them an off world alternative uh, if he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be bothered about uh, other people he wouldn't care a damn about them he's, he just has no interest at all so that that doesn't ring true to me um this this is a creature that would quite happily can consign the whole planet to destruction and death um and without a blink of a, of a lidless eye so that does not make sense to me uh what i think makes more sense to me if he said uh this is a list for want of a better word of those members that I want protected and any deal I do with you means that this shortlist of people are protected. That makes a lot more sense. So that's, a, what, that's one way of, of knowing if, that's, if they're dealing with um, Daddy. And, and another question is that, that uh, Daddy was supposed to be... Uh, at some other point, you said that Daddy threw Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. And you've also said that you were Adam in a past life. Would you like would you like to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, you asked me at twenty fifty one. We've only got ten minutes left. Oh, uh, maybe another maybe another webinar. 
Um, well, you've asked a question, and mm. if I don't answer it, then there'll be some people who think. <laughs> yeah, it's being a, yeah. To okay. To I'll, I'll, I'll address. I'll address. Just them. a couple of nuggets. Yeah. Um, yes. The story in the Bible isn't too far from the truth in its general sense. But my memory, and I do have a memory, my memory is somewhat different. First of all, the Bible talks about one man and one woman. And I know for a fact that there were many, many males and females. Uh, it wasn't just a man and a woman. There was a whole tribe of people. Um, and we have the, the interesting concept of the the apple and the snake. And what I would ask people to try to understand is that Anu had two sons uh, one who was very loyal to him and foresaw that he would become the next ruler and another son who was estranged from him and knew he wouldn't be a ruler and so started to work against the plans and wishes of uh, his father because I think they were from different mothers that's what I seem to remember I think one was from Orion and one was from Cyrus or Sirius but I can't remember which now because I, I just don't remember but ultimately the one that took the guise of the snake in other words the, the Roman Catholic Church tells us that the snake tempted Eve that actually was the guy who the guy <laughs> that was the draconis son who was the wonderful geneticist who altered genetics to allow Adam and Eve to make love, to procreate and make uh, babies other than in a test tube. So that and also uh, informing, you see, he couldn't talk to Adam because Adam wouldn't believe him. The only person that Adam believed was Eve. Eve was the only person who had the heart and mind of Adam so only Eve could influence Adam so this creature knew that so therefore he had to give the information to Eve to give to Adam because Adam wouldn't accept it from anyone else and the information was that you have been created uh, in a laboratory by this creature you, you call your father he isn't really your father he isn't your father he didn't create you I created you in a test tube and that meant that there was a showdown when Adam, supported by Eve, said to the creature that I call Dad, or Daddy when I was little, that you uh, have lied to us. Um, you're not like us. And Daddy's response was, who's given you this information? How do you know this? You know, who, who's told this? And that is why... Uh, that that particular son was then also cast out and was portrayed as the snake because in the religious uh, church line he was then the devil he was the one that was working against the good god and hence humanity was thrown out because it had sussed the game it had understood that it was being tricked and duped and so isn't that what we're going through now? Isn't humanity now on the verge of understanding it's been tricked and duped? And, you know, it's time for humans to grow up and uh, make their own future. So, yes, um, it, it's something that I could probably run a workshop on and, and talk much more about. So, yes, elements in the Bible are true, but they've been deliberately altered to push a particular religious line. So I hope that's helpful. I think that was a very, very refreshing uh, look on what went on. Um, so the, this begs the question, if you, so you would say you were one of the Adams, would you say? Uh, what would, how would you characterize the Eves and what has happened? And is there part of a, is, is there part of a, a, a race? thing going on here like Orions and Pleiadians or Pleiadians and Lyrans or something like that um, you have to understand the term bloodline bloodline is usually used with a reptilian connection uh, Eve will always have red hair and green eyes always and there is a, a soul fragment that can be found in many people who could claim to have some connection with Adam or Eve or whoever else it might be 
um, because that fragment, uh, if activated in that individual, and I say activated in the sense that the person gets a, a memory of it, uh, allows them to have a glimpse or an insight of a particular time. I mean, you know, you talk to people who were um, uh, a factory worker in the Victorian times, or they were Marie Antoinette, or they were this wizard or this witch, and they have genuine uh, past life experiences. And, you know, you can have that, or you can have a soul fragment from, from individuals, and providing you have access to that, then you have a link to it. The, the, the alien creatures refer to me as the Adam. They've always said that you are the Adam. I remember uh, as a 12-year-old as a boy uh, walking in an alien spacecraft and seeing lots of little greys, sort of zeta reticular type creatures, all lying on metal beds um, and the lights flashing on these metal beds. And there was just... Uh, thousands of them, literally thousands of them, and it's staggering just to just to see them all. It's like like those you see where motor cars come out of a factory and they store them in a field, and you see row upon row upon row upon mo motor cars, and it was like that. And I remember walking along, and I stopped to look at one of these 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 creatures, and you know you'd say they were sleeping, but I actually turned to the alien creature with me and said they're learning they're learning and although i was only 12 years old what i understood was these creatures were being programmed so they were uh, they shut down because they had no soul in them they were just uh, robotic type creatures so they'd shut down and they were being reprogrammed for the next task or the next day ahead and the only creature i was with was so impressed that i'd said they're learning rather than oh they're asleep he said to me um the adam is as wise as an owl so they've always referred to me as the Adam, and um, there, there's a reason for that. So, yeah, uh, I've I had to come to terms with um, some some pretty strong memories and some pretty strong um, thoughts. Wow! But yes, it's uh, it's a fascinating subject. Yeah, which, yeah could, could do a separate thing on really. Like <sighs> Several. Yeah, that's that's a whole that's a whole movie series. Simon Parks, we're out of time. It's uh, been fantastic cool. again. So. Uh, would you like to uh, uh, tell people how how to get hold of you? And I will run the uh, run the, the. Well, my my web manager will be very unhappy if I I push it because we we are really running on a shoestring. Uh -huh. And at the moment, there's just me and her and a couple of part time volunteers, and we just you know people want to talk they want to connect yeah. we just do not have the capacity at the moment to to to, to open the doors and let people in it's just you know and you just can't do it so we, we are trying to get the website to a position where people can email us again um so just check back with the website and once we've got a few more volunteers and we're a little bit more up and running we are just we're just a group of volunteers running on a shoestring we're not a great big organization with teams of people all the rest of it um and yet you know we we, we connect so widely with people and you know i see some of these these horrible products for sale and a great huge sales team you know hundreds of people all producing this god-awful product and here we are trying to raise people's consciousness you me and others and we all do it in the back back shed basically yeah. so all I can say to people is just check in with, with the website and once it's up and running, please drop us a line. Thanks very much, Simon. Good night, everybody.